What's going on guys? Big VP back, one of the Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we got another mid-size 22 inch Nintendo vertical cabinet going out to Rob. So you guys might have actually seen a preview of this cabinet on this new YouTube stories thing. I got an email about a beta test, so I've been posting a couple things to the stories. You might even see a little bit of a secret kind of thing going on on this YouTube story thing. But definitely if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, Instagram is where like I always post, especially on my stories. Again, that's my personal account, which is at Vic underscore VP. Be sure to follow that. Um, I do have game case arcades, but I just kind of put the post so people could just see like there, you know, anybody that wants information on arcades it's there. But my Vic VP is my personal one, so you'll see pictures of my my family, my daughter, my wife. Um, but I do post a lot, if not everything, on my Instagram stories. But you might have seen this cabinet on the YouTube stories. Uh, pretty cool, unique story. This is going out to Rob out here in Long Island. Um, funny, actually. Rob actually came out first. I don't know if you guys remember, but I had that Micro Center 27 inch that I couldn't get rid of. Rob actually came out first to see that cabinet. We were hanging out for about maybe 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and he got all excited about 15,000 games. The first game he mentioned was Pac-Man and then Donkey Kong. So I said to him with the you know horizontal screen cabinet, you're not gonna enjoy Pac-Man and Donkey Kong like it should be because really it's vertical and the screen is vertical. You, you don't wanna stretch the image. So we loaded up, automatically he hated it. He definitely recognized like Vic, why are the pixels like this? Why does it look ugly? That was like the first thing he noticed. Then we, were get, we went into like playing, uh, what do we play? Like NES, we played like Madden. And uh, you know, he, ju he just wasn't a fan of it. He's like, yo Vic, I, I don't like this at all. So I basically tried to convince him and he actually watched the videos, which is funny. He walked into the garage, he's like, Vic, I watched a couple of your videos and I watched your Nintendo cabinet. And I didn't put two and two together until later on when we were talking, he goes, Vic, you know what, man? I want the Nintendo vertical cabinet that'll play Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Galaga, Centipede. He's like, keep it simple. He did not enjoy at all the Raspberry Pi builds 15,000 games. And I get that. I always suggest that to people. And I'm like, I send him these videos and I hope people watch them, especially customers. And Rob is one that watched it. Um, I always laugh because he's like, Vic, I watched your video. And I'm like, oh, like I, I always kind of feel weird. <laughs> like, oh, you watch my video, but I'm glad that people watch my videos. But he was like, Vic, I watch your videos, man. I know exactly what it is. And, and that's, that's great. Like, it, it just goes to show like making these videos, people watch them. So um, it's great to know that people are watching the videos. So again, basically we were literally on the micro center cabinet and he's like, Vic, I, I can't do this anymore. Let's just do the vertical cabinet. So this is the 60 in one. I always suggest this. It's so easy. Not to mention, you gotta keep in mind like this, this is, is different from a horizontal regular arcade cabinet. I'm, I'm honestly the type where if you're gonna play Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Galaga, you need your own, that needs its own separate cabinet. It needs this type of cabinet. Whether you get the actual Pac-Man upright, um, you know, full upright where the screen is really like, you know, laid down. Um, you know, I, I always suggest vertical games should have their own cabinet. And I, I love this cabinet. Just like what I did for my cousin, the Mrs. Pac-Man, Rob wanted, Pac-Man artwork and I'm really happy it came out. We sent a couple of proofs out uh, First we were talking about like multi-cade stuff like I could probably flash the screen I did one with like he wanted like the Dallas Cowboys star He wanted like we I was looking at like Frogger and I was like, oh, I, you know He said Vic put games that are on the 16 one. So sent him the first one. It was a hard pass He's like Vic. No, nah, man. I don't like it. He basically wanted what arcade one up had um, which is again it's almost a duplicate and I definitely do love the red team molding on this the red team molding definitely sets it apart So this is a regular pac-man 22 inch mid-size Nintendo vertical cabinet So now a couple of cool things to note um, Maybe game room solutions watch my video They did a couple of modifications to make things better, but I still had to modify a couple of things so again 22 inch mid-size Nintendo vertical cabinet. I mean it is this is like beautiful. I love this, the attract mode. It's so easy to use as far as user interface. 
this 60 and one arcade board is just so easy to use kids could definitely use it and honestly it is real arcade hardware so this thing is meant to be on 24 7. um as far as a couple of the new stuff um not new stuff but the mods i would say that they fixed or they attempted to fix um on my cousin's miss pac-man I did notice that when my cousin was playing Pac-Man, she would go up and the act, actually the whole control panel would go up with it. Um, so I did suggest them to put the door lock mechanism. The only miss on their end was they put it here and it didn't close. So whoever made this right here, go back to the drawing board because it, it, it didn't even close. The actual head on this would end right here on this mdf piece so i don't know who didn't test that basically had to modify it and i i will message uh ryan game Room solutions i highly suggest he does it way the way i did it where right here on the left side of the hinge this, this is the only space you really have to put it here the reason i aim for this side is because there's so much action on the joystick and like I said, when I watched my cousin play hers, this 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 control panel kept lifting up. And my cousin's like, Vic, what can we do about this control panel lifting up? So I'm gonna have to go there and add the little door closer hinge on it. That honestly is like the number one improvement. I would highly suggest and I would always do it from now on because you could you could beat this thing up, it's not going anywhere. As far as game room solutions, they messed up and they kind of ghosted for like five days to a week and I can't wait. First thing they did, this top panel here did not have a T-molding cut. So I broke out my router and I made my T-molding cut. That was number one. Number two, they didn't give me the power cord, but luckily I have a ton of power cords. And last but not least, the weirdest thing ever, um, let me see if I have the bag still. Last thing, the weirdest thing really is that they sent me the hinge holders like this, but they only sent me the females. They gave me no males at all. I had like a bag of nine females and no males. So I had to go run to Home Depot and pick that up because I obviously have to make sure this is good to go for the customer. So that was really the only kind of mishap, but if I didn't have a router to cut this, I, it would have been delayed a week, but I, I have arcade tools and stuff. So luckily I do have the T-molding bit for my router. Other than those little hiccups, I am loving this cabinet. Definitely very cool artwork. I mean, Pac-Man, original Pac-Man. I'm a big fan of Mrs. Pac-Man, um, to be honest, but this right here is gorgeous. I've never really seen a yellow Pac-Man cabinet in person. Um, I've seen the RK one ups, but this honestly blows that out the water. Another quick note again, attention to detail. When I purchased this cabinet from Gaming Solutions, I did order, like I said, I always get the power switch. And they actually gave me the power strip. Um, first time ever getting it, and if you do get it, I highly recommend you look very carefully. This is right from Game Room Solutions. Let's see if I could zoom in on that. And there you have it. You guys always must take a look at everything. Be very careful of all these pre-made stuff. Even the white has a little bit of a slit in it. You can kind of see it in the lighting. Always gotta be careful with that. So that was the first thing I noticed and in the garbage it goes. Now the one thing, and I was gonna shoot the video I should have, I actually assembled this um, and then I had to disassemble it because I made a big uh-oh. The screen. Uh, on my cousin's build, I did, I did the screen just like this. And I said, you know what, for this build, let me see if I tilt back a little bit. Um, so I had this really, not really leaned back, but I had it tilted back. Um, on the TV mounts back here, you can see that there's a, you have basically like, it's really seven circles. So I did have like where it is now on the bottom, but on the top, I bought it to like the second hole and it was, it looked good. It looked all right, but you could see the inside of the cabinet so much. It was a hard turn off. I said, no, you know what? 
it is ugly i didn't like it so i brought it back to this position i think this is the only position to enjoy it um again i saw so much of the inside of the cabin and i was like no i literally assembled it i, I loaded it up and i was like nope put it on the side and then disassembled it again though all in all beautiful cabinet again led marquee i always do my led mods people do love the glow i have a you're gonna see most likely there is a customer named michael on facebook he messaged me he is actually looking to do what i want to do which is the orange donkey kong so you might be seeing that build up very soon but the one thing he saw he was like vic the glow i love the glow on this it must glow and i always do my little mods led strips always nice cuts again i use my bandsaw to get a very nice clean cut here it glows it's beautiful again you got four-way joystick on this and we do have the trackball i i'm a big fan of centipede but playing this i suck so button one gives you a preview but you have to press player one start to start i just i suck at centipede <laughs> i love it but i oh see <laughs> i just suck at it um but awesome stuff again trackball as you could see definitely loving the trackball it just sets it apart two and a half inch most people will say it's a little small but the size of this deck you ain't gonna get no bigger trackball on this so trackball you got your three buttons you do have your coin again learning from my cousin's build no led coin here because it basically reflected off uh all in all though this is a beautiful build it does have the riser again almost mimicking arcade one-ups kind of style um definitely i love it i'm gonna definitely put the camera down i have to take a picture of me standing next to it for facebook um because some people don't really understand the height on it so real quick going back to the screen lean on this i'm gonna just do it right now real quick i'm gonna load up galaga i was playing galaga because galaga is my game if i load up galaga real quick you kind of see how we are right now you kind of see like the the high score it's kind of cut off really like where i'm standing it looks more like that that's like my point of view right now i don't see the high score so that's like the only little thing um i could minimize the screen but there's no point this is the 22 inch full vertical not stretched the image isn't stretched this just looks good i i, I love everything about the way this looks so that's the only one thing i do notice again i'm i'm what 510 511 and like i said if i stand up while playing I kind of lose sight of the high score, but it's really only on Galaga, to be honest. Again, as far as details on the actual software, as I always suggest, Holland Computers. Everything came from Holland Computers. Um, they actually hooked me up with the trackball. I got a trackball, and for some reason, the X or Y axis um, wasn't working on the trackball, so they sent me a new one. Like, literally took maybe three days to get, so I got that in hand. Um, the only other thing I would suggest to Game Room Solutions, now that I'm talking about the trackball, is this pattern right here is incorrect. This pattern has to actually spin. It should be this here and this here. I had to modify the wire um, because I could get left and right, but on Centipede, if I went up, it would go down. Yes, there is settings in the dip switch settings. No, it would not fix. I had to actually take the wire and flip the black and the white wire uh basically putting black to white white to black yes i am talking weird but that is what i had to do to make sure this trackball worked correctly the only fix would have been if game room solutions put the button pattern like that but again that is my job to make sure this thing works flawlessly so that was my little challenge so now learning from my cousin's build i actually moved the amp to underneath the control panel definitely clean wiring as always nice and tight uh, michael was worried that kids might come here and pull the wires out but i think you'll be all right so i did relocate the amp to underneath the control panel only because i really wasn't a fan of having it back here my cousin has this cabinet against the wall so if he had to adjust the volume he kind of has to sneak his hand in so kind of redid that michael's build coming up soon he did give me an idea i can't say it yet because i do have to make sure it works first so you might be seeing a mod on that um opening up the doors 
Again, clean wiring as always, LED strips. The other big thing to note when it comes to these monitors, you do have to put something here. Um, again, this is like a regular monitor. So this side here, right side or left side to me, the monitor actually was in, you know, cause as you could see, it was basically on a tilt and it looked ugly. So you do have to put something here to make sure that the screen evens out. Um, do 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 on the bottom, we got the bottom one. I don't have this bolted. I do have the bolts and the LED controller there, but again, just clean wiring as always. Jamma harness, you will always have spaghetti. Um, I always be careful with this. Uh, on my cousin's build, I just cut all the non existing wire. Um, I won't do that again. Uh, only for personal reasons. I was a little worried, maybe, you know, something might cross or whatever. So I won't be doing that again. We basically just have all the extra wire here, but everything clean. We got our amp, we got our power switch. And again, like I said, on all the builds, I always use this rocker switch thing here. Awesome bottom riser you do have extra led i don't mount that right now because customer is picking this up tomorrow so you know he's going to take it apart meaning the riser separate from the actual cabinet so when he brings it home you could either drop this or you could actually remove the double-sided tape and run it um again mono sound on this it's just it's just a beautiful cabinet i can't get enough of the 60 in one builds Again, I strongly suggest if you are looking to play Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Galaga, Centipede, Breakout, vertical style games, I highly suggest its own vertical cabinet. Somebody did ask what games are uh, using the trackball. Uh, honestly, every game can use the trackball because it's just like another joystick. If you don't get the trackball, you could use the joystick. So for example, if you played Centipede, you could use the joystick to uh, you know fly around with it. Um, a couple of games, you do have Centipede, like I said, uh, Super Breakout is another one, and Arkanoid. I've never played Arkanoid until I was just playing around like with this cabinet, as I always do with uh, testing. And Arkanoid is uh, now probably a must-play game, if I could find it. <laughs> there it is, Arkanoid, page six. Uh, definitely a cool game. I've again, I've never played Arkanoid. Definitely loving like the sound on this. The sound, like, just in this game alone, like this is retro. Uh, you gotta love all that. So again, trackball. And this but this game does use the oh crap. <laughs> this game does use button one to fire off. So if I wanted to do that, there is apparently like power ups and stuff. I just screwed myself by making my thing smaller. Definitely like. A cool game, but just playing games with this trackball is just amazing. Again, playing like Centipede, I love Centipede, but for some reason I just suck on it right now. <laughs> like I'm bad at it. But um, another one, uh, Millipede. Millipede is a uh, another game that will use um the trackball. Again, just just loads of fun. As you can see, I put a coin in to activate. Um, I'm gonna just let this run. I'm not gonna really play it because then I'll explain a track mode. So as you can see, like this isn't even a game that uses the trackball, but the trackball mimics the joystick. So I could use the joystick, as you can see, or I could use, I lo I'm looking at the viewfinder, I could use the trackball. Yes, it isn't the right way to play this game, but it is an option. This is a pretty cool game. Cool. I'm gonna let, let the screen die out, let the game die. And at the end of this video, we're going to go into kind of the um, dip switch settings. So it's great again right now. The game is over. It's going to bring you back into the main menu. So again, when it comes to like kids playing it, anybody playing it, it's just very easy. Right now, as you can see, it went into the main menu. After a couple of seconds, it's going to go into a track mode, meaning it's going to show little video clips and actual a track mode video of that specific game. And it'll just go through it. It'll just cycle through. I, I love it. I, like I said, it's on Super Cobra. It's gonna show you the actual attract mode, maybe for about, I think it's like 10 or 15 seconds, and it'll just swap to the next game. Again, another big advantage to these type of consoles, this type of system, I do love the attract mode. You could literally leave it alone, 
Um, Rob has this. He's got he's got it in his in his garage that he just converted. He painted the floor yesterday, apparently. So this is going to be a very nice showpiece. As you can see right now, Super Cobra Attract Mode is still playing. Basically, I believe that once it's kind of over uh, the actual Attract Mode video, it'll swap over to the next one. So again, it is using real Attract Mode videos. Uh, it's just it's just it's just great. Honestly, it's awesome. So as you can see, it just ended Super Cobra. And like I said, you get your little thing here. It's going to go into Hustler. And now you got the attract mode for Hustler. It's like I said, it's, I love attract modes. Um, you know, Raspberry Pi builds, Hyperspin. You got Hyperspin, obviously, but you just got to love attract mode. You can just leave the system alone and it'll go through all the gameplay videos. So now real quick, I'll show you about the dip switch setting. So it's very important you turn this off. Customers could do this. It's not that bad. Um, let me see if I can grab a flashlight real quick. Hang on. So right here is your jammer board. And you see that blue right there? There's four dip switch settings. You're just going to want to focus on number four, which is all the way to the right. This one here. If you turn this one on, there's only on and off, up or down you are now going to enable service mode, but it's very important to make sure the cabinet is off. So once you kind of flip the switch, you come here and then you turn your system on LEDs will turn on obviously. And now you've, you've, you've enabled service mode in service mode. As you can see, we're going to skip this screen. So it says here, switch two, which is button two. next. This right here, you could clear all the high scores. We're going to leave that alone. Now you get into dips. Um, this first one here, I would leave alone unless you wanted to put it to free play. I don't suggest that because it won't go into a track mode. And as you can see my trackball settings, I do have my settings accordingly. But if I press button two, it goes into each individual game. So Miss Pac-Man, and if I use the joystick, I could modify, right now Miss Pac-Man has five lives. So if I enable it with button one, I could do three lives. If I enable both of them, it's only one life. So there's a couple ways you could do it. If I turn, you know, number one off, I have now two lives. There's a couple things like, for example, speed. That's going to probably be a big deal. Um, difficulty, you could swap to medium or hard. And then I guess there's hearts. Yeah, a lot of stuff, especially when you get into it. So if you press switch two, you switch the game, switch to button two, you switch game. So as you can see with Galaga, we got easy, continuous shooting is off, extra life, how many lives a lot of in-depth detail stuff. So again, if I'm pressing number two, I'm going to go, for example, let's actually see, what was I going to do? Um, Pac-Man. Pac-Man was when I had to modify the settings because it had like five lives and that's not, that's not how we play Pac-Man. Uh, the other one was that extra life was off, but I enabled it to have it on. And again, as you can see, you could change the difficulty. So you could do hard or easy. If I go next, if I go next, let's see if there's any setting for centipede, um, extra life, difficulty, easy move speed. So if you do want centipede to go faster, you could always just, and as you can see, as I'm going to the right, it highlights it. So if button eight, if I hit this, it'll be fast. We could try that. Big thing is that when you are done, you do have to press start and it'll say setup. Okay. And again, you could go into every game and adjust settings. It's pretty cool. Most of these are all off by default. Um, but there's a couple that you might want to, I don't know, check out Arkanoid. I played Arkanoid. There is no continue easy difficulty. And meanwhile, I was garbage at it. Move speed. Let's see. Oh, we could do slow. So you could actually modify the, the, the sensitivity. I should say that's pretty cool. So Arkanoid, if it was too fast, you could always modify it. So once you're done, you press start. Let's say you're done. You come back here. I'm going to close my door for this real quick. I'm going to power off the system. Always make sure it powers off. And then I'm going to now flip that switch four down. Only that it's right at the end. Only that one. That's all I hit was this one. First one was always down, but switch four is down. Now, once you turn it back on, it's going to go through its boot up phase. That's the only thing about the 16 one is that it does this initialization screen. 
takes about i don't know it goes when it's once it goes to 100 so it takes 100 seconds so a minute and a half let's say to boot if you see that screen you are good to go i'm gonna let that load up and while we do we'll do a final look again rob's pac-man 22 inch mid-size vertical cabinet it is awesome it is beautiful like i said I'm kind of excited also. Um, I get excited for everybody's build, but Michael's build for the Donkey Kong orange, I believe he wants. We're still going over details. I might be a little jealous because I want that. <laughs> but clean T molding as always. That's the biggest thing, the biggest challenge. If you don't know how to do T molding, don't attempt T molding, especially when it comes to the corners. I've seen somebody cut the corner. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> you got you to gotta do it correctly. Again, Rob's Pac-Man vertical Nintendo. As you can see, again, we are still initializing. Just let it do its thing. It's finalizing. Did I, I don't remember if I did anything with, did I change any setting? I could use the joystick to navigate or I could use the trackball. Did I do anything with Arkanoid? Let's see. I don't really remember. Again, if you wanna always raise the volume, you just come here and lift up the door and raise up the volume. Let's see. Nope, it looks like I did not do anything to Arkanoid, damn it. <laughs> As that's the only kind of one thing you do have to, if you do want to test the dip switch, you're gonna have to wait that minute for the uh, you know game to reboot. Last thing to show off is the glow on this. Again, we are in night mode, garage lights off, strictly LEDs on. Again, underglow, underneath the control panel, you got the marquee. And we got the strip in the back that will glow back walls. Again, VicVP, Game Case Arcades, LED glow on every build, obviously. Gotta look. Last thing to show off is the glow on this. Again, we are in night mode, garage lights off, strictly LEDs on. Again, underglow, underneath the control panel, you got the marquee. And we got the strip in the back that will glow back walls. Again, VicVP, Game Case Arcades, LED glow on every build, obviously. There you guys have it. Rob, Pac-Man, midsize, 22 inch, vertical Nintendo style cabinet, Vic VP, Game Case Arcades.